Many historians consider what happened west of the Mississippi of minor importance during the War of the Rebellion. However, as the New Mexico campaign illustrated, there was extensive fighting in the region that could have been quite troublesome for the Lincoln administration. One thing to remember also is that when the rebellion started, the vast majority of US regular army troops was on constabulary duty in the West, guarding settlements and settlers, guarding their routes against Native Americans. The war brought these soldiers east, and local volunteers stepped into the void. The example of Oregon will illustrate how these volunteers assumed the constabulary work over the vast western territories of the United States, illustrating that the West mattered during the War's Rebellion. As the U.S. regulars departed, Oregon formed the 1st Oregon Cavalry and 1st Oregon Volunteer Infantry. These men guarded 7 forts and 20 camps. Many of these outposts were associated with reservations. There remains some debate how good these volunteer units actually performed, since they never had to meet the rebel enemy in battle. It is an academic debate that gives greater emphasis to the fighting off on the eastern side of the country, however. The start of the rebellion forced the War Department to reconfigure the United States military districts, with Oregon and California coming together as the Department of the Pacific. The entire department had 3,279 soldiers spread over 28 permanent forts, not including the many temporary camps that existed as well. Of those 3,279 soldiers, only 2,245 were actually present for duty. In the course of the war, the command of the department rested initially with the eventual rebel, Albert Sidney Johnson, and then also briefly was, was Edwin Sumner, who eventually commanded a corps in the Army of the Potomac. For most of the rebellion, Brigadier General George Wright, who had graduated West Point in 1822, was in command. He ended his career in the newly created Department of the Columbia in 1865. At that point, the disgraced Urban McDowell took over the Department of the Pacific. The departure of the regulars forced the state of Oregon to raise the 1st Oregon Cavalry. The duty of the regiment were to fight any invasion force or rebellion within the state, the enforcement of state and federal law, protecting private property, and of course, most importantly, guard against Native American attacks. While Oregon raised forces, the state initially relied on California volunteers to guard the state. Importantly, the western states were not included in the initial call for volunteers, 
but still raised troops for their own defense. Oregon struggled finding soldiers for the 1st Oregon Volunteer Cavalry, meaning the regiment would initially only contain six companies. The men came from the quote-unquote urban areas of the state, Oregon City, Portland, Salem, and the Dallas. It was not until early 1862 that the necessary number of recruits were assembled. The regiment struggled throughout the war with finding volunteers, despite appeals to the patriotism of the people and bounty payments that included $31 for a private, as well as land promises. The majority of the volunteers were from the United States and had settled in Oregon over the previous years. There were also foreign-born volunteers from Norway, Switzerland, France, the United Kingdom, and various German states. Overall, the men did see some action, but not against rebels like their New Mexico and Colorado counterparts. However, as was common for U.S. military units stationed in the West, the regiment rarely served together, and instead, its different companies occupied various forts and camps around the state and nearby territory. Shortly after the regiment was ready for service, they went to Washington Territory to protect settlers and miners along the Salmon River. From the station at Fort Walla Walla, the 1st Oregon Cavalry engaged the Snake Tribe and others. The most important of these expeditions was the Snake River Expedition in Idaho in August, September and October 1862. Companies A, B, and D under Lt. Col. Maury had advanced in the expedition to protect the migrant routes. They accompanied migrant trains throughout the region, but did not engage in major combat. The soldiers did another expedition in the summer of 1863, followed by yet another expedition into southeastern Oregon in the summer of 1864. These were the early stages of what eventually, in 1864, became the Snake War, as the tribe resisted the imperial encroachment of white settlers and miners on their land. When the state authorized the recruitment of the other six companies of the 1st Oregon Cavalry in January 1863, the goal was to send two companies to Camp Watson and two companies to Fort Boise in Idaho Territory. One company each would go to Fort Clemens and Fort Dallas. But again, the 1st Oregon did not see action and at best skirmish with Native Americans. The 1st Oregon Cavalry mustered out of service on November 20, 1866. The story of the 1st Oregon Cavalry is an important part of the War of the Rebellion story. The removal of the regulars left the western territories and states vulnerable. Volunteers in these regions created infantry and cavalry units for their own protection. Even if these men did not fight a single rebel during their service, they were in military service because of the rebellion. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you like the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversation. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.